Okay, we're here for the HSP Discovery Workshop. And I'm going to intro myself just because some people watching this might not really know me from a bar of soap. So I'm just going to let everybody know I'm Jen Turnham and I use my Bachelor of Psychology degree to help HSP extrovert women thrive and shine their light bright in the world. And it's my mission to also educate the world about how amazing HSP extroverts in particular are, because I think the world, particularly with everything that's going on at the moment, is in dire need of HSPs and our traits. So any questions before I just go through the brief activity that you can choose to do in your own time if you like? Any questions about anything we've covered or anything about HSPs in general? Yes, Ronnie. Have, so I'm going to kind of try to keep this general. Um, so the last thing I just thought about was um, what you brought up made me think of this. So I've I think people are drawn to us because of what we can offer them, but sometimes that um, can become a, a negative dynamic in the sense that they um, rely on you for all that. Um, and so, but you're supportive of them and that's the problem. <laughs> um, so withdrawing that support seems uncaring and um, so, yeah, so that's, that's like a, that's something that I'm struggling with. Yep. Okay. <laughs> that's a classic HSP issue. And mm -hmm. the best way to deal with that is with boundaries. And obviously it's a five day challenge I do, so I can't give you <laughs> like a simple answer, but what it becomes about is because if they're kind of leaning on you so heavily that it's having a negative impact on you that's not fair on you so it's about mm -hmm. learning to put boundaries in place so that you don't end up in that kind of toxic dynamic so that you can actually be there for them but not in such a way that you end up suffering as a result and mm -hmm. boundaries are something that you can use to implement in a relationship that's already a bit toxic or it's already not working and then once you get better at boundaries what you find you do is you start to kind of have them automatically in place when you're meeting new people so that's that's kind of how the easiest way to do it and boundaries really is all about recognizing when you're being harmed in the process so if you're being emotionally harmed that's a time when a boundary needs to be put in place so i can't answer it in much more detail than that but does that help yeah yeah i mean i think i just need to find out what those boundaries need to look like without seeming like an uncaring person <laughs> yes yep. and that's what the challenge is there to do so I kind of walk you through that process yep. and I ask you to choose one relationship to work on throughout that process so that you can actually implement them in a, in a practical scenario so I think that would be very helpful for you if you do my next boundaries challenge um, okay. I can go through it in coaching as well but the boundaries challenge is obviously free so because boundaries it's not like what you describe, it's not a simple try this and it will work. It's it's more of a process, which is why I can't kind of answer it right, yeah, no, right now. Cool. Thanks. And I don't know if the other ladies have questions. Um, so but one of the other things that you brought up was, um, you know, whether you tell somebody your HSP or not. So because I'm an oversharer, um, I have been like, oh, and I just figured out this new thing about myself. <laughs> and it, I don't, how, how do you say, how do you explain either, you know, when you, if I do want to share something like kind of what I found out about myself, or if you're trying to kind of explain yourself to somebody, um, how do you concisely say that in a way that makes sense to others? Is um, there any, like, the first thing yeah. I'd say is, don't stop being an oversharer. <laughs> like, that's something that you can, because it's, and the way you even said it, it's, it's excitement and it's happiness and it's, and that's something to share with people. Um, the, the only thing about that is then you need to 
learn how to deal with the fallout of you feeling potentially like you've overshared because the reactions you get can be very wide and, and varied. But if you're comfortable in yourself, then you can get over those much easier. But in terms of saying it concisely, I think sensory processing sensitivity so you could say I'm a HSP and then they'll say, what does that mean? You say it's a highly sensitive person. And the concise way I say it is I usually just say my brain is very active. It can get very tiring. I can get overstimulated and overwhelmed quite easily. But most of the time, it's a really cool thing. So you kind of just touch on it so that they kind of get it a bit. And then if they're interested and you it's someone that you continue to interact with, then they'll learn more and more kind of as you go through the relationship. Because for example, it, you might come across a situation and you have some sort of reaction or something about it triggers you as a HSP, for example, you can then share with that. You can say, okay, this, this crowded shopping mall is freaking me out. It's my HSP side coming out. Can we just go sit and have a coffee, for example? So then you can start to kind of educate them more as the relationship goes through. But in the beginning, I do tend to just be quite succinct because then it's almost like they'll let you know if they want to know more, but you've kind of succeeded in explaining the basics to them. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because uh, we've been talking about it in the house and I've been sharing with the kids and my husband what I've learned. And now like, I'll say like, oh, you know, this is, this is too to whatever, you know, and they'll be like, oh, it's because you're an HSP, you know, <laughs> like, it's kind of like this, it's kind of become a joke in a way, um, but not in a disrespectful way. So, um, and then my last question was, um, so one of the things that I figured out is that my daughter is also, uh, as I'm learning about it, I'm recognizing that she is too, though, although an introvert, and um, my husband and I discussed it, we took the test for her, um, and then the next night she happened to say something about dad, you know, I think I'm a pretty sensitive person. And he was like, I think she's ready to hear this. Actually, I shared this with Terry and, um, and then I did share it with her and she was like, oh, you know, so now I kind of want to get help her learn more about it. Um, and, you know, I don't know if there's like books for teens, she's 13, um, or anything else that I can do to help her like this is great you know for adults um and extroverts and she I don't identify her that way um and I don't think she would identify herself that way but um you know and again if you want to sideline about that um I'm just curious if there's things no, out there great. it's a great question and because it's a trait it, there is a chance that it's inherited so there's there's always a good chance that if you're HSP you're going to pass that on to your children so and the the good thing about and why I want to address this question is because if you know your HSP and you can help guide your child through life and let them know that it's okay and it's a beautiful thing sooner rather than later, you can actually literally transform their experience of life. I just got goosebumps saying that because it is such a profound thing that you can do for your children because as all of us can relate to, growing up not knowing about it, that was half the problem is because we knew that something was different about us, but we felt that it was wrong. Whereas you now have the opportunity to just amazingly transform her experience of life. And that's really exciting. In terms of what to do, there is, Elaine Aaron wrote a book, The Highly Sensitive Child, I think it's called. So I would suggest reading that because that should help you learn how to interact with her I'm sure the book will probably I haven't read it myself but I'm sure the book will give you some tips and tools to to use and I would suggest trying to ascertain whether the highly sensitive person book might actually be relevant for her to read depending on where you think she's at whether she's whether it's maybe in a couple of years you give that to her or but yeah and I think in the meantime just having open discussions about how it impacts you is then going to also help her understand that this isn't something that's wrong with her this is a beautiful unique gift that she has and there are just certain things that she needs to be aware of in terms of managing herself so that she doesn't get overwhelmed and overstimulated and empathize too much with people and all the things that we've talked about so 
that's where I would start for sure. Does that help? Cool, thanks. Any other questions before we, Terry? I just have one question. Um, as far as introvert and extrovert, I honestly cannot figure out where in life I all of a sudden became extroverted. I grew up really alone by myself. I was down by the pond. I was up a tree. Um, and then all of a sudden, here I am. I'm like extroverted. Yep. And it, it's just the screwiest thing because I, I'm like, um, and I don't know if it has to do with just figuring out your self-worth or what the dealio is. I know part of it's my profession. Um, and you just get more comfortable with people. I have a blast in my office. It's like I have a party every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, yeah, if you, Veronique is all good for that. Yeah, party in the house. Um, and I, I, I mean, I had a patient tell me today, you know, I listened to the other doctors in the, in the other rooms and there's nothing fun happening in there. There's always something fun in your office, in your room. And I, I don't, I, I don't know where it came from because I always thought I was a terrible introvert. I don't get it. When you were a kid, were you alone by choice or was it because of your upbringing, the challenges with your mum you shared, um, was it that you knew that you didn't fit in so you kind of thought, oh, it's easier just to kind of be alone? Probably refuge. It was probably looking for peace. Yep. Um, my favourite tree was to, I climbed so high that you know, I couldn't hear anybody from the ground, so when they were looking for me, they couldn't find me. Um, yeah, the solitude gave me peace. It was the only place I could find it. Yep. It was pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty sucky. And I think that, yeah, what you say about refuge is probably it. So that's your HSP side needing that solitude. Because I remember I went through a period when I was in, um, I think you guys call it mid middle school. I was about 14 and I was struggling to fit in at high school. I was also in this academic extension like accelerated program so I was called a square and I was yeah it was quite challenging and so I went through a stage where I remember getting 10 books out of the library each week and I would just go home from school and pretty much read until it was time to go to bed or do my homework or whatever so there was definitely periods of solitude for me and I think the trick is the the trick is recognizing I think I think now if you you know how I talked about craving sensory stimulation. So if you feel that kind of desire to be around people and to, to have like kind of that energetic party stuff happening in your office, that's your extrovert side searching for those dopamine hits. And if you were a true introvert, you wouldn't want to do that very often because it would be too overwhelming for you. So I, the only way I can kind of, I suppose, link them together is that, it was your HSP side seeking refuge when you were a child as opposed to you were introverted. And then as you got older, the extrovert side kind of demanded that sensory stimulation. And I think being outside in nature also probably would have provided your extrovert brain with some of that sensory stimulation as well. So being up a tree, you're going to have a lot of a lot more stimulation than. And so for me, it was the books. I was getting that stimulation from the books, but it comes to a point where I think you need that from people. So does that help explain it? That I don't think you, because you can't change. The science shows that you can't. Well, that's the thing that anything. really messed me up I'm like no I gotta be I mean I never went to a high school dance I never went to the prom I never I was I was by myself 95 percent of the time so yeah I, it's probably huh Is it, oh, can I share a um, I do I was <laughs> well I was gonna say that as a child and as a younger person we don't have control over our environment we're in the environment that we're put in and you know, without knowing the entire story, just the, the bits that I do know, when you were in with the experiences that it seems you may have had with these other people weren't always positive. So then 
being social wasn't a po- and interacting with others wasn't a so a positive interaction. It was probably a negative. So you found that stimulation from other things like Jen was saying. And then, and now as an adult, you recognize not only your worth, but your safety. You feel you're like in a safer place and you can, that's your office, Terry. Like you control that office and you control what happens in that office. And if you want that stimulation, then you can create that stimulation. And now it's your environment and you control the environment that you're in versus being in an environment that somebody else created for you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I think, well, it always confused me because I was always so intimidated, but I think it's probably just the way I was raised and the environment. Yeah, I think so, it, Yeah. And the fact that you create that environment now on purpose, an introvert, a true introvert wouldn't do that because it would just be too much for them. So to me, that's kind of the clincher that confirms that you are extrovert and then those not so helpful experiences you had as a child is probably what almost like dampened your extrovert side and you had to find other ways to plug in your battery to get that that energy is that yeah, i did a lot of singing too so yeah cool good question though. Thanks. thank you no worries anything else awesome all right well i'll just go through this activity very briefly it's an optional thing if you would like to do it Um, because I know we've gone a bit over time I've just got about maybe five ten minutes to go if that's okay with you all I know it's late where you are so thank you for (laughs) for sticking with me okay so the activity that is optional is it's a it's a bit of a self-reflection activity so it's about asking the question how evolved am I as a HSP at the moment but bearing in mind that this can change. So don't stress if it's not much, as a big part of this depends on our childhood and how much personal development work we've done already. So I'm going to ask you to think back on the strengths and the challenges and then ask yourself some questions. So I'll just go through the strengths again. So intuition, connection and interaction with others, empathy, compassion and wisdom. So when you're looking at that strengths list, what strengths do you now recognize within yourself? Or what strengths do you commit to focusing on so that you can live into that strength and embrace it and let it shine, essentially? And then in terms of the challenges, so the challenges were overthinking, taking things personally, having too much on our plate, self-esteem, self-worth, not good enough type challenges and lack of boundaries. So when it comes to the challenges, what challenges of that list do you have? It might be all of them and that's okay. (laughs) What challenges do you have? And which of those do you commit or what would you like to overcome first? So we'll kind of make it a bit of a priority list. So if I could choose one of these challenges, what would I like to fix first? And then that way you can start then rather than it kind of gives you a bit of a direction and a bit of a path as opposed to kind of going, okay, I'm going to overcome all these challenges. And then your brain just goes, no, that's too hard and it won't bother. So that's the activity optional, as I said.